When we have given the first meeting now, we can meet that we shall enter the 19th day of March 2024 at 6 p.m. The town of the Middle East City Hall will be in session by the May. The two biggest government shows that's 551 One or more members of the town council may attend and participate in a video conference form the town council will be busy present at the above meeting location where the following items will be discussed. Call the order at 601. Communication of which? Holy Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and all the many blessings you bestow upon us. Lord, we ask you to come to us tonight with uh, guidance, your wisdom, and your support, Lord, and help us to engage in meaningful discussion, Lord, and nurture the bonds of Lord, as we enter into the spiritual season of Passover, we ask you to bring peace, may it rain down on the world and eliminate all the bloodshed, Lord, in our nation. For some stand, we pray for all these things. Amen. 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 For liberty and justice for all. On arm and the to fly, I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one day under God, one people. <laughs> If you want to excuse council to talk about I'll read by Mayor Clark, but you know that can go with the Brian to excuse council to talk about us. Time the audience is allowed three minutes per person to address the council on any topic. There will be no discussion of formal action taken on the agenda item. You can identify themselves for people speaking to the request form that the secretary is prior to the meeting. Mr. Losey. I want to give a little update. Ian Rose over there at the Marine looking at trying to get some post pandemic. Uh, uh, prices on you know, trying to rebuild the bulk and stuff. And of course, everything has gone up considerably. It's been about six years since we had those others. But anyway, it's uh, it, it looks like it's about $500 a running foot to build bulk in. And that we've got uh, 1,120 feet, which is about $560,000. And then uh, Mr. Rose estimated the removal and disposal costs of all the cement and bulkheading that's there now, 224000 And uh, the boat ramp, the new boat ramp, uh, 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 30, it's 18 foot wide presently. We'd like to, to uh, make it 36 foot wide where two boats could walk simultaneously. Uh, that's about 100000 and looking at uh, rebuild all the piers and docks, except for the handicap ramp, which they would work around it, leave all that handicap the stuff that's about three years old. It's all in good shape. So really, we're looking at about a million five to do the whole project. And I asked him if we could do it in uh, in phases, and he said yes. Uh, it would be more expensive in the long run because they'd have to come set up. And do part of it and then take the crane and all that stuff away and then bring it back uh, on each phase. So anyway, that's that's where we're at. So I trust you guys to come up with some go with the script. This thing fall in the earth. Thank you. Thank you. 
new business discussion consideration of possible action on the following items. Proclamation. Proclamation for the Rotary Club of Port Isabel, Texas, celebrating 88 years of service to its community of the Laguna Madre area. You just told us that you've been involved with the organization for so long. I'd like to read the proclamation. Whereas the Rotary Club of Port Isabel, Texas was chartered in 1936 and celebrated 88 years of service to its community and communities of the Laguna Madre, including the Vista, Port Isabel, South Padre Island, and the Wild. And whereas Rotary International is a worldwide service organization founded on February 23, 1905, with a membership of 1.4 million professionals and business leaders around the world, 46,000 clubs, grouped into 529 districts and 34 zones. And whereas the Rotary motto, service above self, inspires members to provide humanitarian service, encourage high ethical standards, and promote goodwill and peace in the world. And whereas Rotary International's vision statement is, quote, together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. And whereas the Rotary Foundation is a public charity that transforms donations into life-changing, sustainable projects that address seven areas of focus. Promoting peace, fighting disease, providing clean water, sanitation and hygiene, saving mothers and children, supporting and growing local economies, and protecting the environment. And whereas the Rotary Club of Port Isabel is engaged in community based projects funded locally and through the Rotary Foundation, such as End Polio Now, that addresses eradicating polio at the local and international levels. And whereas the district, Rotary District 59, 30, South Texas and all of its clubs are committed to promoting peace in our community, our schools, and in our communities. Now, therefore, we, the town of the Good East of Texas, call upon all its citizens to recognize and celebrate the 119th anniversary of the Foundry of Rotary International on February 23, 2024. And we congratulate our Rotarians for their commitment to serve our community, proclaimed on this, the 19th day of March 2023. Minutes, consideration possible action to approve the following minutes, January 9th, 2024, the regular meeting. Directions. Notes. February 13th, 2024. Do you have any questions? Changes to the February 13th regular meeting. February 29th, 2024, special meeting. Okay. Motion made by Councilman Toll and second by Councilman Bryant to approve minutes January 9th, February 13th, and February 29th. Okay. 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 
Yes. 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 I have three kinds of reports. So, um, the fact for uh, reconciliation fees are during the time to go down to the book as of um, February 29th is uh, $2,628,000. $629,185. And then the next page is the income statement. We are at about 91.5% collection on our property tax uh, uh, property tax income. Uh, last year, this time, the property tax, we were at 96%. So um, with the testimony alone, I'm on schedule to be at 99% of what we're um, estimated to be at this for, for tax collection. Um, overall, we are at 78% um, our income uh, revenue that we projected. Uh, this time last year, we were at 75%, so we're within the schedule on our income. And um, the last page of the income and uh, uh, expense statement, or the revenue and expenditure statement, is the uh, expenses. And we're at about 40% of uh, the budgeted expenses uh, spent. Last year, we were at 38% at this time, and we're about 41% of the previous year. So we want to make sure you're focused on you know, expenses and that you know that those are already here. So we're about 41% done this year and our expenses are um, right on track with what we could have been according to where we're at in here. And then if anyone has any questions about specific items, I'm happy to answer them at this time. Doesn't need opportunity to to go away. So assuming it's not passed, it will come. So that is it. Um, everyone's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Have before health insurance employee benefits. Consideration about the life of the health insurance option for employee benefits. So we got notice that the female health insurance benefits were going to increase significantly. And uh, for this information, I went out and um, contacted with a broker to uh, work with us to see what our best options were for the health insurance benefits for the employees. And um, so he's here to present um, kind of what a little bit of the backstory of what our options were and kind of receive our uh, recommendations of what we're going to do. We're going to need a, um, a significant budget increase to uh, continue the, the health insurance benefits. Um, the plan we're suggesting or that we're recommending that Delta go over is going to be about a um, $63,000 budget amendment at the end of the health insurance uh, fund that is for employees. That's how much the research was done. And so He's, um, he'll go over his research and um, kind of give you a brief overline of what's going on and what we're kind of recommending to do. Uh, ask him any questions about that. So, John, do you want to take the floor? Yeah, I'll let you say it. Yeah, I think so. Good evening, Council. My name is Brandon tonight. I want to go up inside the institution in Dallas, Texas. I'll partner with Valley Ridge Consulting. We're at the Institute of Brokerage Firms in Dallas. Um, a little bit about Valley Risk Consulting. 
uh, we have the specialized in the public sector. We have over 25 public sector housing across the valley, school districts, cities, water districts, housing authorities, you name it, me and my partner have done a lot. So um, I'm here today, I was uh, reached out to help uh, find some savings for the city. Um, and we are able to focus out with multiple carriers. As you see on the very first page, carrier TML operate. So TML, this current rate is at $515.62 for your current plan, plan design. Your renewal went up to $771.94. So in essence, it was a 50% increase with TML. TML came back and offered the additional plan. Uh, so that's a little different max out of pocket. So we were able to, they were able to lower this down to six hundred ninety five dollars and six cents. So we shopped out the market to go with Edna, Healthcare Highway, Blue Cross, United Healthcare, Cigna. We didn't put United Healthcare or Cigna on, on here because they were four for fifth place. They didn't want to, you know, put so many on one page. But we did the top four. So on this page, we found that if you, you're never going to have apples to apples with all these carriers. They're never going to have the exact same plan design, but we try to get as close as possible. So our recommendation is going to be going with Aetna. Um, if you compare the option that, that TML was offering at $750 deductible, the plan we're proposing is a $500 deductible. So you're going to be, your employees will have less deductible out of their pockets. And, and also they, for the first time, they'll have co-pays for a lot of different procedures. So if they go see the doctor, they're used to paying, paying a 20% co-insurance. Now, and that can range when you go to the doctor, it can be 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars, depending on what, what uh, procedures or what tests are being done at the primary care physician's office. Here, you'll get a $25 copay. So, and that's it. You're not going to have any other surprise billing. Specialist copay, $75. Um, urgent care, $75. Labs and extras remain the same. There's better co insurance. And we were able to negotiate this rate down to under what your, your offer was with TML at $692. But we were able to also negotiate some credits to the city. So, on top of this, it being less expensive than your current TML offering, we're able to get $300 per enrolled employee. We have 23 enrolled employees on the plan currently. So, right under $7,000. Six nine hundred dollars will be credited to the city on their invoice, as well as if you do bundle with their dental and vision program, which I am recommending you do, there's going to be an additional admin credit of two hundred twenty-five dollars per each employee. So it's another five thousand one hundred and seventy-five dollars. So by bundling, we're able to bring down our exposure that our renewal was at one hundred and ninety-one thousand down to one hundred and seventy-eight thousand seventy-nine thousand. So by bundling, we'll going to be able to save almost $13,000. So my recommendation is on well, the medical and dental vision is to go with Aetna, um, as well as this product that Aetna is offering. So the first time um, we're able to do a level funded product. There's three different types of uh, funding for medical plans. There's employee insurance, which you guys currently are on. So if you perform well throughout the year, you'll never see a dime back. There it keeps everything. On a level funded, it's in between uh, fully insured and self funding, but self funding school district or larger entities are self funded. Level funding is in the middle, but you have the same protection as fully insured. You're never going to pay more than you see. But you have the chance to get money back at the end of the year. And with, and with, with my research on the next page, I can see a trend in your claim history for the last two years. You guys are running at a 66% loss ratio, which is fantastic. The Valley is notorious for running. Way over 100% on your claims history, and you guys are running under it. So, for the past two years, if you were level funded, you're, there's a potential new fund back to the entity. So we're able to secure a quote with Edna with the added value of having being level funded. So, the last point that they offered um, in the thought of level funding is there's a guaranteed surplus of $2,000. On top of all the different you know, credits I mentioned that Edna's willing to offer. They wanted to offer a guaranteed surplus. So if the group performs poorly and runs over 100% loss ratio, and you have no money left in the claims fund, that's fine because you're still going to get $2,000 back to the city that's guaranteeing it. Um, but from what I see in your, your claims history, running at 66%, you're going to get more than $2,000 back if you keep running at this track record. So I'm recommending Edna for the medical. And I know that's probably a lot of information. So, yeah, 
I have a question. What's the cost of your service? Right. Like, so for an example, like so we've been going with TML for quite some time, and then now we have all these other options as far as like, you know, why couldn't you come up with this plan? Why is this service necessary? Why is he necessary versus you coming out? Because there, it, it, it's just, it's a massive uh, budget to cut it fixed because it's doing apples to oranges and um, what I was, the email conference that you were talking about, the management like that, they talked um, highly about having like because it's such um there's so many different variables to choose with the levels of insurance and coverage and that's why and so he's actually uh, one of those reasons. Yeah, so um, actually my fees are included in the rates they're by your I don't have to cost the city. And actually I work with you know as well I have another city with you know so if I was actually your broker at the time I could have negotiated for you guys. Uh, not your broker potentially in the future I will be or maybe after tonight but no if I was your broker I was actually the been able to negotiate with TML um, in the past. I have one other city right now with TML medical list. So uh, I have been about five years working with them. So the service has leverage. Yeah, yes, I'm actually yeah, able to go negotiating all versus your leverage. Yeah, like so when, when I talked to TML, they told us this is the rate what they were going to be. And so we had two different phone calls with um with our TML representative and and you know uh, which we, I, we were going through it and we were going through the, the cost of the dependents and everything was just going up and she said those are just our options and, and um, so then that's when I didn't like our options and I thought that if, even if we're going to go up that much I figured we just will have some other confirmation of these were our only options and so I said that I met him at um, with the, the TML team and so I reached out and we just asked like how does this work you know do we have to go with TML we've been with TML always you know and um, and so we we uh, began the process of doing it and then he could have, you know, had he been representing us and then took something out of our pockets and pay him to uh, to, to help us make sure we can maximize uh, our money and give us the most for the benefits for the employees and maximize our dollars for the city. So the 55, the figure that you gave in the beginning as far as if the increases are concerned for this next fiscal year, that is that is included in this particular rate here or yeah so the or rate will not. go into effect May 1st. So we were gonna have so what we budgeted when we did the budget and at the fiscal year budget we have um, calculated a 20 percent increase is what we've done throughout the last three years and that's been enough but it wasn't enough to get the female so it's going back to come back and come up with us um even if we can stay for as much as we can off the top so what we're going to have to Increase the budget by fifteen thousand one hundred and fifty-six. So uh, that's the difference of what this time costs. As opposed to what with TML, just like say if we didn't have it, it Well, it would be. I mean, if we stay with TML's rate and did what they suggested, it would be. I didn't figure that number would be higher than this. It would be forty-nine thousand eight hundred and twelve. Is that what they were doing? And it was just recommending we're doing this. So where do you get 65? Well, 63 is what the difference is of right. what we're going to increase the budget, right? So the difference in the plans are. I just want to know the difference between what what the amendment is going to have to be TML versus the consultant. Well, we're not paying for the consultant. The amendment I know. Well, going through him for the service. Well, we're, the, the amendment's going to be for health um, health insurance. So, he, like, the consulting has other things. So, we're going to just basically do budget amendment for funds for the health insurance benefit. And so, the health insurance benefit is just going to be for the, the, the agenda. It's, it's, it's going to be whether you're just choosing the Aetna carrier or the TML carrier. That I understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay. What it says here, the dollar of the current is 49800 if we save the TML. Forty-eight thousand nine ninety. So with that, and that's and that's the 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 the that's the the that's the that's the that's the 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 that's the the that's the 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 the
like it's like with the TR. Mm -hmm. They offer health insurance. Right. Right. And it's much more expensive than it is with the school district going with the in now. And and so you need to go get a broker to analyze all these things. Yeah. They deal with more bigger markets that are okay. to negotiate a little bit. Yeah. 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 In terms of quality insurance, and one of our employees goes to the doctor now since that now it's him. Um I don't know if this is a fair question, but can you comment on the quality of this which comes up? Most of the physicians that leave the hospitals and emergency rooms take Edna over PML or is it kind of a wash? That would be a concern I'd have with the really good insurance. You know, so, it's not like it's not good. We're talking Edna, this is Karen County, and we're going to have a 90 percent overlay for the providers who are declared as PCPs or specialists. That's 90 percent. Edna has had the county contract for I don't know how many years now, and they've expanded their network extensively. And it actually is a provider that's not in the network. Um, we actually have the ability to go get that network and contract with us with that directly. So there's always a way to help out that employee if the system is good. And also, with the other thing, the quality disruption report, we can, if we, uh, we start working with the city, we can get all the providers, or I'm sorry, all the doctors that the employees have and run a report with that net to make sure it's all in place. Thank you, Jeff. Policy comparison is the top of the fund to employees. Yes, I agree. The dependents are in the under underwriting compared to, so you, they could still get them dependents on the plan. But, and actually, our office is, is able to offer not only just the, the plan to their employees here, but if you want to go on the exchange, I have agents in our office will help them to see if it's a more formal offer or if it's like this. For most of the time, it is more affordable and more just for the tenants. In December, the last year, the same Yes, that's correct. I think we had one that just recently left, and that's here at 2030. Okay. Um, I'd like to move on to the to the general three more questions. I just have one more question. So there is nothing that would be changing the outcome in any kind of negative way from switching over to general. No. I mean as far as us looking at and I'm actually on the very back of this with my presentation, I did go in all the different value ads that Edna does offer. Uh, so they do offer a lot of great programs that are really uh, so they have an over the value catalog. This CBS now owns that. So they can use them for some extra value added by going to CBS. They give your employees $25 every quarter to use at, at, at this over the, the counter value catalog. So there's a lot of different uh, prescriptions in here that are, are uh, medications that they can get and it'd be zero cost to them. So they have $100 to use per, per year, basically. And then there's also the health care of the diabetic med supply. They have the men discounts. They have all of those. They have a PAT program, those programs for mental health. They have Peladon 24 7. There's a lot of extra value added that they have that you don't need. So I also included that with most packs. When you're talking about how we can put these in groups, because these groups, then we get better prices, right? That's what how you explained it at the beginning of the day. I didn't get it. But the way I understood is that a broker like you or whoever can now make decisions of how many people are in a specific plan and how many to the plan, or is this plan now individual to the left hand stuff? This one is sustained individual to the group. There is, there is something that might be above this called a captain, but that's when you 
combine multiple one group, but now this is just going to be the individual that made the plan for the city. So as well as you know, the density of this is like how we can see the group that only and the small little part that we recommend is about 12 percent of the you know, really good city. So I'd like to continue with the dentals. So the dentals on the next page actually displays. So currently with the dental program, you get CNO as well. So on this one, it's kind of a, uh, a home run with just going in with Aetna. So currently on the far left, you have your current plan. You have a, a $1,600 annual maximum for your dental, which is basically $1,600 per year for procedures for your, for your employees. It's a 180 plan, 100% is basic services, you know, like cleaning, your vitamins, x-rays, your 80 percent is for your basic services, 60 percent is for your major services, and that's the percentage that they have on the reimbursed of that doctor. So when we look at, we prepared it out, we looked at Aetna, they're actually giving you a richer plan at 196 percent, so they're going to be reimbursing at a higher rate, so it's going to be less out of pocket for your, your employees when you go to the center's office. And also, it's increasing to a $2,500 annual maximum for the uh, for the employees, so their annual maximum almost doubles, and it's about a do almost a dollar less than what they're currently paying. You're getting more value for less money on your dental plan by switching over to that. Any questions for middle? So the vision, um, the vision we're also recommending with that no, we're going to be looking at a 24% savings when you switch to this plan. Um, it's still a 12 plus 12 plan, uh, so they basically get new lenses, new teeth frames, and new eyes every 12 months, every year. And this is also going to be a savings to the city. So the employer sponsored uh, currently is you're paying $8.93 per employee. We're looking at a savings of $24.7. Also, go ahead with that. And on the next uh, Page is the basic life in AD and B. So the city does not offer this right now, but we have this in almost all of our entities. So we, we just wanted to show it today for the city of Laguna Vista. If the city would like to do a basic life and AD and B policy for all of its employees, this is what it means is you basically be getting life insurance for all of your employees, $20,000. And then if they happen to pass away in an accident, it doubles to $40,000. AD and B actually had all that in this website. So for less than four dollars a month, this is the normal option. It's the most competitive, and they're going to be going to be able to potentially cover all your employees for uh, I think ninety ninety six ninety seven dollars a month for all everyone to have ten thousand dollars of life insurance. So this is just something we wanted to show as out there. A lot of all surrounding cities do offer this as well. I offer this in actually the town next to to the Gina Vista. Um, so this is a very good period. And also, the city hasn't offered any voluntary products before. When I say voluntary products, is this, this is on the employee if they wish to purchase these products. Short term disability, if long term disability, if the employee gets hurt or sick and cannot go to work, at least there's a way for them to get a paycheck and, you know, and pay their bills. So, short term is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be for a short duration, either three to six months. The plan we have is going to be for three months. So they'll, They'll be getting 60% of their salary if they do elect to get this product. And it's not voluntary, it's on them. They wish, wish to get it. And the great thing about these voluntary products that I'm going to be mentioning short, long term, accident, hospital, critical illness, cancer is that they're going to be on a section 125 plan, which means it's a pre tax basis. So not only do your employees get more uh, products, but it actually will help save the city more money on your diet before you pay taxes. So that's another additional savings that will be used to the city. And especially um, the next thing it's also recommending bundling you to the Omaha for your long-term disability. Again, this is let's just say hypothetically one of your police officers or first responders you know, goes through a call and you know, having to randomly you know, get injured and they can't go to work. So let's just say it's a 30-year-old uh, police officer. They get hurt, can't go back to work. This will this will cover them at least three percent of their salary up to SSNRA, Social Security or Normal Retirement Age. So they'll get 35 years of 60% of their salary. So they'll be taken care of for 35 years. 
So I think this is a very good option to have to protect it. And then uh, next thing is uh, voluntary life. And this is the city and it's voluntary. You can you can put this for your employees or staff or your children. Um, if you do if they do want to get voluntary life insurance, they can get up to fifty thousand dollars from the staff and they will uh, end up making sure of themselves. Not the questionnaires, nothing. And the way to hear the you know, you're not told you get the more expensive it's gonna get. But this is just something that you can get it's a great offer for your employees. Again, it's voluntary. And then last but not least, the last two products we're recommending are just from Colonial Life. And I actually have this in the rest of the business today. The uh, for care for illness, cancer, hospital indemnity, and accidents, we're recommending to go with Colonial. Right, so I'm gonna let the uh, three bucks talk. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, council members. I'm uh, my name's Dion Chavez, not to be confused with Celine Dion. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that being said, Colonial Life is a company that's been around for eight, seven years since 1937. Their home office is based out of Columbia, South Carolina. I've worked with Colonial for the better part of 25 years. And so, uh, in short, Colonial is a company that uh, is rated A with Moody, uh, Ford, and Invest. And so it is a very solid company, pays all their claims. Uh, this company is also owned by a uh, mega company called Unum. So this Colonial Life is a subsidiary. In short, uh, the products that we're presenting would be your accident plan, cancer plan, critical illness, heart attack, stroke, as well as hospital indemnity. Uh, the idea behind these plans is basically your secondary or supplemental insurance. And the reason they are offered is because in most cases, your medical insurance will usually cover the majority of instances where maybe there's a, a health issue or an injury issue. But as everyone knows, there's always a deductible that needs to be paid. Or there's always co-insurance that needs to be paid. So those out-of-pocket expenses can be, uh, if you will, subsidized or offset by these plans. Uh, these plans generally run on a monthly basis in the neighborhood of about $18 to $30, depending on the level, uh, because there's different options. You know, somebody may say, I'd like to get a cancer plan that's just rich in benefits, and so that may run about $30 a month. Uh, and they may say, I do want a cancer plan, but I don't want one that you know, has all the bells and whistles. So in short, you know, that might run about $20 a month. So these are voluntary benefits, which is to say that if an employee elects to get them, they would pay for them through payroll out of their own pocket. And they are affordable, which is to say that if ever the person should retire uh, or move on to work elsewhere, this is something that they could continue to pay through bankrupt and or self-pay. Uh, so again, uh, we do offer these benefits in uh, Point Isabel. Uh, we also offer them in Brownsville ISD, and we've been there the better part of, I think, almost two decades, as well as the city of Brownsville, uh, to name a few of the public sector entities in this area. And of course, as we go west, with there are other, like uh, McAllen ISD, the city of McAllen, Rio Grande City, CISD. So uh, again, with that, uh, I just thought I'd give a brief uh, overview, broad strokes, but if there are any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer. All right, thank you. You know, versus the you know, the benefits are deductible here, right? I mean, if they start that on May 1st, is there deductible to April 30th of next year, or do they start with April 1st? It'll be a plan for the start of the And then, well, the last thing I put in the very back of your packets is a little sample benefits guide. So, this is something we give to all of our clients. This is a very generic one. We just wanted to do so be something that we give to all of our, our clients. You know, just gives you basic information medical, dental, vision, care, contact, our offices, you know, our my name right here. This is a broker, our office manager, some of our customer service reps. We talk about, you know, eligibility. How do you qualify for these benefits? When can you get them? You know, marriage, divorce, a birth of a child, adoption. Uh, or open enrollment. Uh, and then we, we like to make it so if your employees get a benefit plan, if your well, base plan, best plan, high plan, or in this case, it's not one plan, uh, we can open up their same network, co pays are going to be used, all of that network, everything here is going to be used. Same thing with the general business, you just give them another chance. And then 
how much the gain tax is if you you know have adequate revision all of your pieces and we're also the other final gain tax. Again, you didn't meet all of our points. I have a question that the uh if you ever sign up you guys will all be here to help yes. walk you through all the sign ups. Yes, so actually the additional thing would be here some of our clients will be less to employ that existing call employees out here. So we'll make this just as less easy. We can actually use some of the deductible points for. I'm gonna have like about probably three different agents here to fill out their enrollment for free in enrollment. And they'll explain everything and show them all these reductions on their on their laptops, laptops and iPads. And then they print out, you know, a summary where they'll sign it and they'll have it just in certain parts on file. So you can get out and you can do eight, you know, eight to five or even, you know, earlier. I know some of the police officers come in earlier to great the uh, uh, graveyard, so we can still be take up some time. Yeah. Good question. My question is again. If there is an asset to that, or not, I understand that the benefits are outweighing what St. Thomas is providing, but I just want to know what the bottom line is for us as a council because we're going to have to see that that amendment come next month or whenever it's going to be presented. And I just want to know email versus the service. No, like what we're going to have to amend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what's so that? So can you get written down here on the bottom 49,000, 48,000, 30, 46. So the yeah, the, the ULM is GML increase and what they're recommending is 49,801. The DLM what we're we'll recommending is 48,990. But we're going to be subtracting all the different all more because we're going to be bundling, we're going to subtract the sixty nine hundred dollars. And also, I should be subtracting the 5175 and also the guaranteed surplus of 2000 mm -hmm. So instead of it being 49000 we're looking at 34950 So then $15,000. So then when this is presented, we should see that figure first of all, let's say. Right. Well, yeah. In the ballpark. And I think the yeah. other advantage is on the full page. Looking at the I completely, I completely agree. I, I'm, a, I'm an educator, so I know we, we have all these services. So it's huge benefits. But I just wanted to know what the numbers were going to be when we see it, just so that we make it crystal clear why the service is necessary. So I know you have your time. Yes, no, I'm familiar. Yeah. If I may, I think one of the questions Ms. Howard had, if I understood it correctly, is how, so how do you all get paid? Do we pay you? Or does the insurance company pay you? So that's what you need to ask. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's how I thought. That's part of it. It was like, what happened? What is, in other words, what, what is the extra we get to pay their lovely services? Or just not through? No, they're not paying through. And getting paid through. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 So, oh, okay. So that would line up. If the 63 for the year, then it's 33. Right. Yeah. Or 17, it's just a double pay. Right. With a lot more questions. I mean, a lot more benefit with the consultant or broker. So the recommendation yeah. is going with Edna, and then along with that, um, we have been working with, uh, we've had AFLAC as our second, uh, well, yeah, our voluntary credit um, supplemental, and um, um, so we are going to have to do 
Similar programs available for our law enforcement officers, additional life insurance modalities that the, the officers have at their disposal. There, there is a, there, there is a, a lot of different. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what percentage of our officers for, for our first responders to the guidance of those opportunities and how that plays into the I know this uh, secondary speaking of a lot of people can say that. Motion made by Councilman Ritola, seconded by Councilmember Fowler to accept Becca and Family Heritage as the food uh, health insurance offer for the employee councils. Councilmember Fowler? Yes. Councilmember Fowler? Yes. Councilmember Fowler? Yes. Councilmember Fowler? Yes. 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 Making the city do other people's projects and putting the city's in 
not good for the system. Like we, we can't tell the marina what to do with the marina, but we're paying for it. So it would be an awkward position for the city. So I think that's one of the reasons that the guideline for ARPA changed. Um, same with the, the guideline changed about smaller businesses not being able to have the, the SAMS federal number because some of these smaller businesses just don't, they can't get to access the money because they're just, they don't have those higher requirements. So um, that's, that's really neat. That's why this has come up now, because now we can just designate as general as the marina. It can do what they want with that money, as long as it's the designation that we brought, right? Which is if it's a marina approved. So as long as they do something that qualifies as an improvement, we can, um, that's the justification. All we need to write the check for whatever that place decides to Good. Okay. Um, so that's the guideline. So, um, unfortunately, I do not have, um, I don't think any of the, Ms. Sally was uh, a community member having contact with her. Um, I, I believe she's out of town, but she did designate a couple of folks within her um, circle to be able to um, gather surveys, a presentation for us this evening, but I did not receive anything um, through my email. But I did say that we would table it and put it on to the next meeting. Um, yeah, and that's as far as I got. Oh, that. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Item seven, primary care clinic advisory board. The city is possible to have a clinic for primary care clinic advisory board. So, all of you that have received the application that we talked about, the primary care advisory board. And um, I believe that what we decided to do is um, we will have uh, one of you take one of the first manager or your appointment from the application. We'll start with the mayor and then go to one, two, three, and so on. And you can select the appointment candidate that, uh, from the application. So, okay. So I'm uh, going to appoint uh, Councilmember Dr. Real Romero to be on the committee. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, and uh, no, the ones, uh, no, the uh, the
So, I'll make the motion to uh, accept Dr. Romero, Dr. Adam Milan, Mike Leon, Steve Robinson, William Alexander, Mark Balder, and Dean Webb. Uh, pardon me, Chair, thank you, Vice Chair. Okay, go ahead. On this advisory board, um, when are they meeting? So I'm going to um, send out an email to everybody that uh, that was appointed them and sort of get a feel for schedules and see what we can kind of come up with within a meeting for the first date. And then at that first meeting, we can kind of decide if they want to meet, you know, every month on the third Wednesday or, you know, just and so they can. That, that's how we're going to do it unless they want to direct you. Um, if, if that's that, so they can kind of decide how often they meet or if they meet. Yeah. I mean, I assume monthly, yeah. but I don't, I mean, if you don't have that, so I don't. And that's how we can start. Right. That's so, kind of a new thing, so. With the other advisory boards, they kind of meet as they, as they have something to discuss or as they have something to and so, um, you know, they may need to put time to figure out the parameters of the board and make them into a get back to you guys and, you know, talk about things like that to get it connected. And um, then that's another direction. This work, I know we just need some special uh, people who have two medical signals on them. Will that be this one as well? Yeah. Oh, oh. So this is. That I that I ask Ms. Gonzalez is that make sure that um that you that you're I guess what we want them to do I guess in the sense like try to help in that respect just make sure that we're that you're guiding guiding those conversations. Okay. I have nine travel requests for consideration for our collective group firm and authorized travel. So I'm sorry, the state of BG Brazilian grant program and payment award consideration of possible action to appoint council members to the RFP report. So um, this is a grant we're going out for the, the Brazilian program. We only received one application for in response to the RFP, so we do not create a review uh review board we can just accept what application and look forward to that and um so we don't we don't need a review board but 
Or the ask pieces um, for them to. Um... Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, when they like, council member, how would you accept frameworks as our relay grant program? Um, for now? Yes. Council Member Yes. Council Member Yes. Council Member Yes. 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 <laughs> this class is just uh, basically I'm getting introduced to you. You already said we want to uh, build Blackwood Law Enforcement School, which is about uh, San Diego State University. And it's just uh, the beginning of a leadership series. So they understand little things that we know, like we talk about racial profiling and uh, children leadership skills and doing so. Good, good school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Yes.
So um, I'm going to start with uh, where we're at with our grants, our ARPA grant. We are still moving along on our checklist. Um, we have available funds right now uh, that have not been designated of $138,158. At the next meeting, we're going to be looking at the resolution to be um, uh, proposals for the LBRA equipment and um, possibly some of the regular equipment replacement. Um, but right now, the, what's left of availability is one that is not designated for the group of the um, And I already discussed the LBRA um, uh, improvement uh, designation change, so I won't, uh, I won't go over that again. Um, and the only thing that's not on here is the PO number for the track, uh, public works tractor attachment. And um, so we did get that bid in for the public works uh, the attachment, and we are going to need to maintain. Um, the postal digger, the craw, the craw grapple, and so that'll help like when we have the brush and all the columns to, to pick that up. Um, the angle blade, the angle blade is going to help us make all the ditches along um, uh, the, between the culverts and the houses to help um, drainage flow um, between the houses. And then, um, the, and then the postal digger is the okay. So um, those are the attachments we're going to get for the tractor. And um, uh, they're trying to find us a street sweeper. Um, so that so they, that this all comes to about nineteen thousand. So there's about six thousand dollars left, and they're going to try to get these uh, street sweepers. So after brush, after a storm, we can do all the things we can um, uh, maintain our facilities a little bit uh, to make them So, but they're looking for that. Um, the next grant is uh, the Valley Legacy Grant application. Um, this is Patty Alexander and I get to submit today on um, the. Letter of interest. So the Valley Baptist um, grant is a little different than most grants. You have to submit your letter of interest to say you're interested, and then they have to say, "Okay, well now let's look at your application." And then so everybody needs to get our hands in the ball, basically. <laughs> so um, we hit submit on that today. Uh, we'll have about two weeks or so. We'll know if we get the invitation to apply for the grant. Which, given our uh, being a recipient of the Texas Parks and Wildlife, is um, Pretty certain that we will get invited to uh, file the application, but obviously it's grants and applications, so there's no guarantee. But that's um, what's done today. Um, there is um, some, there is a uh, splash pad design that uh, Patty is working with the, uh, ex the representative from the extra stuff. Uh, but, uh, she's working with extra play, Marissa from extra play, to design the, the splash pad. Um, I attached a picture of it. Uh, the only design we can't have anything that's non uh, non universal equipment. So the slide that's missing in the picture, we won't have because it needs to be all um, universal equipment, universal design equipment. So that'll get um, replaced with a different uh, apparatus of some sort. So oh, it's like it was like yeah, we can't have the slide. Um, I mean, we could have it if we wanted to pay for it with separate city funds, but um, it, but it can't be part of this. Uh, so, uh, and it looks like, and then so we're doing about two hundred fifty thousand for the um, flash pad itself, and then the other two hundred fifty thousand will be for the design and the installation system, the construction, and everything else. So, um, those those more specifics will be um, obviously in the grant application, but I just wanted to like to have the, the overall uh, concept. And the square footage is going to be approximately twenty seven hundred square feet of the of the flash pad. And then we're going to do benches around the, the trees so you can build uh, you know, the the trees playing with the Thank you. These slash pads will they use the code? Will they use all of them? Well, I know that's the that's the recirculation system. I'm not sure exactly what happened in, in the recirculation system exactly, but um I, I can get that information. But 
but we'll do a, it won't, I won't get filtered out into the, the machine monitoring. It'll go back through and it'll be um, basically like you said. I mean, if anybody needs that, this is fine. You know, it's perfectly clean. Good water is really fun. And it's sort of like if a dog was going to get there, and you say, you know, it's still going to have to take her up right away. So it's not going to go. It's been fun trying to make sure we have it during time. No action on the basic solution, but it's in Texas Parks and Wildlife. Um, and we can find them for the to protect our, our environment. But I really want to make sure that we have it going. Yeah, I'll talk to you about that afterwards. So I'm going to take this time. Thank you. Um, the, the next grant is our geolos range grant. Um, this, uh, first, the first draw was uh, submitted on 221. So the, the engineering firm and the administrative firm of the Texas Air Force and Texas Air So we um, submitted that. They are still working on the engineering and the design of the, of the project. I don't know if anybody's gone down the street to go see the the fire hydrants and they have these um big tall stakes with these colorful flags on them and those are the uh, the engineers just for their survey and design for the project so it, it, it doesn't feel like they're doing anything because we can't see a whole lot but but they're out there and they're still looking once we get about 30 percent of the survey done um the grant work will work in tandem with the site until we do and so those will work at the same time so hopefully we can speed up the process um to get actually seeing more of this um, done and um, then after that, um, once the design is complete, we will be able to start doing the, um, the bids for contracting. So, so that's the still in the design process. Um, and the goal for um, actually seeing shovel in the dirt to start the process is July 2024. But you know, I say that loosely because federal funding and, and I mean, not, not federal, but grant funding and some things are involved. Um, the CDG team is building a grant program. Um, we just obviously did our district three administrator for that with the grant works. So the grant works will help us fund the grant. It will go out to all the programs and help um, actually facilitate that program. Just for a little bit of detail that we didn't have at the last meeting, this grant is up to three hundred thousand dollars, and we don't have to do any math that part. Um, we'll be updating and uh, we're going to visit a comprehensive plan, which we already have one, but it'll be upgrade, upgrading it. Um, we'll be integrating that plan with our hazardization plan. Um, we're going to be identifying if there's any new hazard um, risks that and how those might be mitigated and looked into the plan. Um, these, these plans will include studies, a population study. It'll give us a housing study, a land use study. Um, they, uh, our zoning ordinance will be um, updated to obviously cover all of these uh, results of these studies and um, infrastructure study and then a capital plan. So we're going to miss to have um, all of these done. There's just time to for upgrading and we'll get, um, get it all done at the cost of zero to the city. And um, so questions on that? Okay, so the um, the USDA grant opportunities are the one thing we wanted to work with was the library. Right before um, I came to this meeting, I saw an email from um, uh, Mr. Alexander, and it looks like we've gotten more details on the USDA grant, and it may not qualify for those, but he has some op um, some options for some other ones. It looks like those were more designated for like university libraries and such, but um, never fear, we are still. Um, moving forward with trying to find something. I did meet with um, a representative from XR Terra Trail yesterday through the S9 bid, and there's actually a grant opportunity to, to partner with the Terra Terra Trail that they have written and put together. It's going to cost nothing to the three of the benefits, but they want to partner with us to, um, they're trying to bring the nature and the libraries together. So they want to do some enhanced library with nature play or um, the, they call it the um, the library lending program with the backpacks. I don't know if you guys have seen it around Home Harlem again. They have the backpacks and like maybe it'll be on caterpillars and so they'll have all the books about caterpillars and different things and then kids can come and borrow the backpacks and borrow and you know bring them back. Um the the nature play are little um things like if you have stumps that are you know different levels and put them out there outside of the library and kids have a little like area to play on that's nature based. So what we're what the goal of the character is 
trail kids to get kids back in nature and to get kids back involved in playing with their hands and in the dirt. And there's a lot of different options for the playing, you know, like I think I mentioned the dump, you know, the stick design. It, I mean, it, there was just a list of, of all different things. It's just the goal is to get kids reconnected with nature and families, you know, to, to do that. And so you can, uh, this grant is up to $14,000, um, but it, this is a strategy grant, this is a planning grant, and so we can put some of that into the learning library. If they just wanted to know if we wanted to partner, I said, obviously, yes, you know, it doesn't cost anything to look into this. But, um, they once we once they submit this grant opportunity, um, then if we get approved, then the uh, the representative from Fair Fair Trails, um, Buddha, and one other representative would actually go to the training for um, this library development with the Fair Fair Trails and the Trails. Um, I think she said it was in Wisconsin, but it's paid for through this grant. So we'd have three people that would go and get educated on library development and how they're trying to bring everything together. So it seems like it's um, a good opportunity and especially since we're trying to um, really revamp our library and get it back to life. And you know, we're, we're obviously very supportive of the character trails. And um, so I think this is the start of a good, a good partnership. And um, and as we know more, obviously I'll let you so, And I, I have a little bit of material from that, but we just met with them yesterday, so I didn't get to everybody, but I mean, it's basically what I just put out there, but it's basically what I just put out there as well. Um, the, oh, the survey for the library, we had 142 responses from the school, and um, the results are there, and depending on the grants that we get to apply for, we'll be able to use that data as a public input for that, so um, uh, those are our reasons as well. Um, the police grant, she's gotten um, all three grants that you guys uh, approved the, the last month. She's gotten all three of them submitted. We got one um, from Redwood Creek, so we've already known that we can be accepted the, the award for that. So these will be back online for us to be. So um, yes. those are in progress. And then um, I wanted to update, I don't have anything written down because I didn't get anything from the, the company, but I wanted to mention. Uh, Mayor and I had the opportunity to meet with um, uh, the representative from Valley Regional and um, HBA Healthcare, and um, they presented a, a healthcare option for Laguna Vista. It's a, basically a telemedicine healthcare option. Um, they were real excited to see if we would be interested. We told them that we were affiliating to um, the Primary Care Advisory Board. And they said that they would be willing to come and present to that, that board, you know, um, to get the public input to see if it would be something that they, um, that the, the public would be interested in. Because, you know, ultimately that's who has to want it, you know. So um, we, so we have that moving in that direction. So I just want to let you guys know that that's beginning with them, um, that they're still trying to move it forward. But at this point, you know, we we said we wanted to wait till we got the advisory board, you know, together to make a few the steps. So, um, but that was a really good um, meeting and a, a, a positive, one of the positive moments for us and a new going to for our hospital care clinic. Um, I wanted to just advise everybody that um, we did send Mr. Roman uh, Ramirez to vector training in February and he got his vector um, uh, certificate, uh, certificate and he'll actually take the um, vector officer test and become a you know licensed vector uh, officer so that'll help us remember so just just knowledge all around you know like we talk about the university you know it's everyone thinks vector and thinks mosquitoes which is a big portion of it but you know it's so much more than that it's you know rats and fleas and ticks and so just being able to you know they're the ones out there in our in our grass and in our area so just to you know to be more educated to identify problems that we can hopefully uh, mitigate against if there we do so um I was really proud of that um, one of our uh, uh, paramedics did submit his notice of resignation starting March 31st. Um, Keith Waters and Keith David are working to hire um, a replacement. And so I don't know who that will be, but um, we, we have um, options and we did interviews. And so if you would like more on that, I will, I will update everybody. Um, the new website is up and running. Um, I think it was um, down for a couple hours this morning and a couple hours over the weekend um, when we were trying to get the SSL purchase tickets to upload and talk to the old website. Right now, I um, 
I have the old website still up on kind of this backdoor way so I can still get to it if there's things missing. But what I'm asking everybody, and I will send a group communication out to the issue the public is to use the site. It's a work in progress. You know, if there's buttons that aren't working, if something is amiss, you know, we, we will continue to correct it and make it better. But the, the flow, the comments I've gotten so far, it, it does have a better flow. It has a much, um, it's a very professional feel to it, and it'll, and it'll just get, get better with time. That one is up and, and running. And um, so I shouldn't have to go down again. I think this morning we got the last glitch um, sort of worked out. So I don't plan on it going down, but if it does, I will. I'll let everybody know if it does have to go down. Thank you for getting that. Sue is big. There's a lot. We have a lot to offer here. Just put it in the writing on the page. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's so, it was so much fun. There's so many, you know, all that we have. And, and I think that there's so many more things to talk about. And I hope that through the website and how the page and the writing we can, you know, um, highlight some of the things that we have. So, um, I have the all the head shots of Steph and the town council are already done, and some of the, the shots of around town to make sure some of the our 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 features are in progress getting finalized. I've also scheduled um, another set of pictures for May 29th. We are having elections, and we are going to have um, some council members who are going to get updated within a month of, of the election. So we're already um, ready to go for that, and then um, we'll get the group composite photos. And that should that that'll really I think take the the website up to the next level of just taking all the pictures looking the form and everything just having a really professional look of when somebody comes to our website and that's our first you know impression of that. So um our marketing is still moving moving forward. Our um our new our, our open rate still is hovering around 61 uh, 60 percent open rate of people that are actually reading our emails. Um but there is a social um, audience growth of 0.78%, and um, we added, uh, there's a contact growth of 50, but that's a little um, deceiving because we added a um, group in our constant contact to, um, to reach out to all of our hot uh, certificate holders. So that, that's not just we were residents, that was a um, hot uh, contact uh, sheet. So, I mean, there were new ones, but it's not 50 new visitors, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, just to, uh, Sunset Breeze, I still don't have any news on, um, and the, wait, what am I looking at? The next event, um, is going to be, uh, the Easter event this Saturday. So there is the color run and the, um, Easter egg hunt for the Get Out Hot Dog of Christmas Soders. Um, we'll be doing the repackaging of the, the lunches here on Friday, so if anyone wants to um, I really like one. I mean, you know, it didn't take us that long. It took us what three hours on the second meeting, so I love that. I mean, it depends on if people show up. But, um, and oh, and I do want to give a special thanks to, to Divis. Divis helped us with the physical order to get it placed through Divis. Uh, uh, you know, somebody has to close the restaurant. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> yeah, I've been helpful. Thank you for that. The Divis that Divis that helps get the thing through, so we uh, were able to do it through them. And um, so we'll do we have, let's just say one o'clock on that way we can get it done. Um, so if you guys remember that it wanted to do um, stuff like this at Friday, if not, we'll do it then. And then just a reminder that the big heroes run is scheduled for the, uh, April 27th. Um, again, that's not anything the city puts on. That's just what we hope and. We um, so as far as the, the department reports go, um, one of the ones I wanted to bring your guys' attention to is um, our uh, our first responder department. So our first responder department, um, the comfort of the DCFRO wanted to do some work and explore the first responder organization, and that encumbers our EMS, our fire, our police, but um, the call volume, um, I wanted to I wanted to bring everyone's attention to. So between um, January 2023 and January 2024, there's been a 30% increase in the call volume. So from last January 2023, we had 28 calls. This year, we've had um, 37 calls. Um, so 
in the month of February compared to 2023, we had 20 calls for EMS. And in February 2024, we had 37 calls for EMS. So it's an 87, I mean, an 85 percent increase. So our town is growing, um, it's really needed, and um, it's, it's certainly a challenge that, that we're being able to, um, to respond. If um, if you take these calculations out and you do a forecasting, um, if, if a trend, well, if this trend continues, it looks like we're going to have a 42 percent increase. Of call volume for the, for these people, so um, that that's a significant amount of, of increase in that county, and um, you know new homes going up, but the sunset homes and everything like that. So um, I think it's it's being um, very well received, and um, and well the numbers don't lie, so it's obviously very needed. So I just wanted to bring your attention to that, and um, let's see the. The fire department did training where they learned to use the bridge to reach the door. That was um, the door that they brought with one of their kids on a regret. So they all got trained how to bust through the door. And um, uh, it was pretty cool to me. And um, for this last month, there were 34 calls for medical. And for the yeah, 34 calls for medical, there were four fire calls. And um, well, the police, they just have. Like there was, there was 113 calls um, for for service. Um, that doesn't count. 113. So um, that's involved, you know, people being arrested, DUI, domestic violence disturbances, or traffic accidents, things like that. So. Mm -hmm. The library, we had um, a really good month at the library. They had a, um, the, obviously we had a tip and support, which Ms. Howard already reported on. Um, we have homeschoolers that come in, um, and that was, um, I mean, 20 kids came into the library for the homeschool event, which was really nice. They had a local author uh, forum, and um, we had a group that, well, so they took that event. Um, and by far, our most popular class is the nutrition class that we brought to the library. And it only had, uh, for the month, it had um, 39, uh, or no, I'm sorry, um, 12 adults in, uh, for, for that class. So 12 adults who were learning um, for that class. And I think it was pretty much time. So it's growing, and um, it, it has a strong following, and uh, hopefully we can keep growing. Uh, the number of patrons that visited the library in the month of February was 1,500. So, uh, public works, any questions on library? Um, public works, so um, in addition to their everyday duties, we uh, started some projects at Warlock Park. They were rebuilding our own. They were perfect, um, and we're working on any of them. Uh, around the walking trail. Um, Veterans Park, same thing, uh, they're bringing in some sprinklers. There was um, the signs that needed to be replaced, so those were replaced properly. And um, light bulbs on the, the monument field, or the field monument. Um, they repaired some sprinklers at the library as well. And then the walking trail, lots of stuff starting to bloom, so the walking trail is going to get, um, start to get a lot more attention. I believe the Rio Grande um, Mesa Valley chapter will start to in our weekly. Um, volunteer visits to help clean up and work on on the on the walking trail. That kind of got paused due to COVID in this month and so they couldn't do as much work. So I believe that's going to resume um, here shortly. If I get with Robert with, the, with that chapter, but um, I foresee that starting again um, uh, certainly in the next couple months. Um, and there was the potholes along the road that um, we had to repair, and um, the paving and signs and stop signs that are also replaced. One complaint we've gotten, or some not complaint, but a concern about the pool structures. It's the banner up there for the winter. Um, they have, um, they they look like they're they're tilted in, and one looks more than the other because the pool itself is kind of bent, so it makes it worse. But there is some movement of the pool at the bottom of the of the pool, so we didn't put any um, banners on it. We didn't want to make it worse, so we're working with um, ADC is donating their time to. Um, helps get a fix test out and working on getting us the right permits because we're going to have to put some of the um, guy wires down to secure those holes. So once we get that secured, then we'll be able to get better process. So um, hopefully that'll be fixed before July when we have our next fix. So 
if that's why it's just in front of the um, I don't know if anybody noticed, but we have started doing work on some of the local drainage problems. Um, uh, we started on Orange Street where your public works is out there um, taking a couple of driveways and digging out what's being the culverts at the end um, of, the, of the driveways. So when it rains, we have the rainwater flowing through. And so we are going to talk to the citizens on Orange and just some, some, well, on most of the streets, some yards have let their um, grass go completely over. And so it, it extracts the flow drain. So we're going to go in and help clean out. And that's what the tool for, but from our there's going to help us keep the distance. Uh, between the culverts, so we can have better flow of the and so that's being done. Orange is kind of a little step, and we can drop it down, and yeah, as we do, do the project to rise out and go there. But that, that's the goal to do in addition to the everyday um, project is getting, or everyday tour is basically the city that project. So, um, yeah, so um, let's see, we, for, um, there was a total of 69 building inspections, and we issued a total of 20 of those permits this month. And we had um, 214 cases on our court docket, so that's a really hard at work in the community council. So for the big month of December, and <laughs> we have started um, being more aggressive on the force mode. So you may hear a citizen. We, you know, we get complaints about the lot turnover over drone and we cite them. And um, so we are, we are to the point now that everyone's on a, on a regular schedule. If they've gotten their notice once, you know, we are being more aggressive about the lot getting um, maintained regularly and not yet. And so we started citing them instead of just before we would just sell them for the force mill and, you know, we moved on. But now we are starting to get, you know, get some ideas on being better to their property. So hopefully um, people don't have to go through driveways and Pause every month and you know, it's for some tracks, so we're gonna leave them. So, um, we're trying to get a little more aggressive to help as summer comes and, and keep everybody tall grass, mosquitoes, all that good stuff. So, and the alleyways, too, because I think a lot of citizens don't realize they're responsible for the alleyways as well. Yeah, and that's another piece of the, the editing that we need to do is, is the, yep, yeah. and yeah. um. Then is there anything that was on the agenda that I probably talk about? She's been yelling at me. I'm having trouble over there. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> 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 